Welcome, good gentles all. Thank you for joining me for Who's That in the Hat? A class on rank, regalia, and awards in the Society for Creative Anachronism. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Baroness Margaret Ladd, and I'm the Kingdom Chatelaine here in Atlantia. I started playing in the SCA in 2013 in the Barony of Storvik. Since then, I have played in a few groups and am now living in the Shire of Isenfear, which is located in the North Central Virginia area. I've been a Chatelaine for six years now, since 2015, and working with newcomers is one of my favorite things to do in the SCA, though I also enjoy sewing and embroidery and shooting archery. Our agenda for the class today will cover royals, baronage, an overview of awards, armigerous and non-armigerous society awards, kingdom awards, and this is specific to the Kingdom of Atlantia, baronies of Atlantia and their baronial awards, some notes, and lastly, my contact information in case you have any questions regarding today's presentation. Now, a bit of information before we get started on our class. Within the Society for Creative Anachronism, there are laws and policies that are true society-wide. Then, each regional group has its own laws and policies that hold true for that group only. The same is true with our traditions. If you are interested in society-wide rules, laws, or policy, I would recommend reading the Organizational Handbook available on the SCA homepage. This book explains the structure and policies of the SCA as a whole. Similar information on the Kingdom of Atlantia can be found on its website. To provide context to the information about to be discussed, it's important to remember that the SCA is an idealistic recreation of the Middle Ages and a feudal society. When we each join the SCA, we start out as equal, gently born. Through martial skill, artistic skill, or service, people can earn awards and titles. It is through these titles and awards that people get the medallions, jewelry, and coronets that they wear at events. Once a person has received an award that gives them a title or position, they are encouraged to wear the regalia of their rank. For the purpose of this guide, we will start with society-wide titles and ranks, and then move to those specific to Atlantia. One last thing to consider. In the Middle Ages, sumptuary laws were very popular. Sumptuary laws were a way for the crown to tell people what they were allowed to wear. That sometimes happens in the modern Middle Ages, too. Some kingdoms regulate what can and cannot be worn. Some don't. The Kingdom of Atlantia does not have sumptuary laws, so there will be no further discussion of them during this class. When discussing rank in the SCA, we usually start from the top with royals. The Society for Creative Anachronism is divided into regional groups, the largest of which are called kingdoms. Those kingdoms can sometimes contain regional groups known as principalities. The royals are those who rule over kingdoms and principalities. Since this presentation is specific to the Kingdom of Atlantia, it should be noted here that Atlantia does not have any principalities. Now, the correct way to address the crown or the king or queen of a kingdom is with your majesty. The correct way to address the heirs to the crown of a kingdom or the prince and princess is with your highness. Likewise, the correct way to address the crown of a principality is also with your highness. I'd like to note here that there are alternative non-gendered titles to king and queen and prince and princess, the most common of which are sovereign and consort. Now the crown often wears the heraldry of the kingdom or principality that they represent. They also wear the crowns of that kingdom or principality. Most kingdoms and principalities have multiple sets of crowns that are worn by their royalty. If you'd like to view some of those pictures, please check out this website. It has pictures of the crowns from all of the kingdoms around the known world. 
When discussing royalty, the first question someone usually asks is, well, how do you get to be king or queen? I'll tell you. In order to become royalty, fighters will first apply by submitting a letter of intent to the current crown in order to compete in a crown tournament. This is an armored combat tournament. The winner of that tournament and their consort are then named heirs to be crowned at the next coronation event. Now, the length of a crown's reign can vary depending on the kingdom, but it is usually four or six months following a prior term as crown heirs. Another group of people that you might see wearing coronets at events are the baronage. In the SCA, there are two types of baronage, landed baronage and court baronage. A landed baron or baroness, also called a territorial baron or baroness, oversees a barony, which is one type of regional group inside of a kingdom. The baronage serve as representatives to the crown. They are the figureheads of that group. They support the populace. They recommend them for awards. In Atlantia, our baronage have an original term of three years. Then, if both they and the crown agree, they can extend that term for another two years. Landed baronage are chosen by the crown following a polling of the opinions of their populace. These are called baronial pollings. There are usually several candidates who volunteer to be considered on a baronial polling. The populace then writes to the crown, listing their preference amongst those candidates and why they should be considered as baronage. The crown makes the final decision. The coronets worn by the baronage have six points and often use elements of baronial heraldry on them so that people can identify them and associate them with the group that they represent. Landed baronage answer to the title, Your Excellency. The other type of baronage is court baronage. A court baron or baroness is a person who has been awarded that title by the crown. In Atlantia, a landed baron or baroness, the baronage that we discussed on the previous slide, is traditionally awarded this title as a reward for their service as baronage once that service is complete. Other people can be made a court baron or baroness as a thank you for dedicated service or great skill or simply at the whim of the crown. Baronial coronets have six points and often use elements of an individual's heraldry. Court baronage also answers to the title, Your Excellency. The coronet on this screen is a great example of a baronial coronet because you can clearly see each of the six pearled points. Now that we've discussed who gets to wear a crown or coronet and why, let's move on to the other awards within the SCA. The SCA uses a ranked system for awards. At the top are the awards and orders that are recognized across the society regardless of what kingdom you live in. These include peerages and non-armigerous society awards. Next are kingdom level awards. These include non-armigerous kingdom orders and awards, award of arms level awards including orders of merit, and grants of arms level awards including orders of high merit. Finally, there are baronial awards and orders. Now, a quick note about the difference between armigerous awards and orders and non-armigerous awards. Armigerous awards or orders are so-called because they grant arms to the receiver, meaning that the receiver's heraldic device is now considered a coat of arms of the nobility. Armigerous awards or orders fall into three categories. From lowest to highest, we have the award of arms, then the grant of arms, and lastly, the patent of arms. There is also a difference between orders and awards. A recipient can only be made a member of an order once. Meanwhile, an award can be given multiple times to the same person. 
Let's start with Armidurus Society Awards and Orders, also known as peerages. These are considered the Lifetime Achievement Awards of the SCA. Let's start with the most recognizable of the peerages, the Royal Peers. Royal Peers are individuals who have previously served as royals. There are three types of Royal Peers. A Duke or Duchess is someone who has reigned as royalty of a kingdom at least twice. They are allowed to wear ducal coronets, which are considered reserved regalia. Only dukes or duchesses can wear these. Ducal coronets feature what we call strawberry leaves. This is a plant with three leaves. They are addressed as your grace. A count or countess is someone who has reigned as royalty of a kingdom at least once. They are allowed to wear county coronets, which are also considered reserved regalia. Only counts or countesses can wear these. County coronets feature what we call crenellations. This is the embattled design you see that is reminiscent of a castle wall. They are addressed as your excellency. A viscount or viscountess is someone who has reigned as royalty of a principality. They are allowed to wear coronets that feature 12 points. They are also addressed as your excellency. Here are some good examples of the types of coronets worn by royal peers. You can very clearly see the difference between the 12 points of a viscounty coronet, the crenellations of a county coronet, and the strawberry leaves of a ducal coronet. Now these coronets can become more complex as individuals may add heraldry or other elements, but these are the three distinguishing features that remain the same for each. The next four peerages are often called bestowed peerages. They are so named because they must be bestowed on an individual by the crown versus a royal peerage which automatically follows service as the crown. Now the first of these peerages, and these are in no particular order, is the order of the chivalry. The order of the chivalry is composed of individuals who have been recognized for their excellence and the skills of armored combat. Now with the order of the chivalry, an individual will have two options. If, upon induction, that individual chooses to swear fealty to the crown, they are made a knight. If they choose not to swear fealty to the crown, they are made a master or mistress of arms. Knights are referred to and addressed by the title of Sir, and they have the right to wear a white belt, spurs, and a chain of fealty. Again, this is reserved regalia. Only a knight can wear these items. Masters and mistresses of arms are referred to and addressed by the title of master or mistress, and they have the right to wear a white baldric and spurs. Again, reserved regalia. Students of the chivalry are known as squires and typically wear a red belt. The red belt is not considered reserved regalia Anyone in the society can wear a red belt. However, traditionally, if someone wears a red belt, it means that they are a squire or a student to a member of the Order of the Chivalry. The next peerage is the Order of the Laurel. The Order of the Laurel is comprised of individuals who have been recognized for their excellence in and dedication to the arts and sciences. Companions of the Order of the Laurel are typically addressed by the title of Master or Mistress. Only a Laurel has the right to wear the badge of the Order, a Laurel wreath. This is reserved regalia. Students of Laurels are known as apprentices and typically wear a green belt. Like the red belt discussed on the previous slide, this is not reserved regalia. Anyone in the society can wear a green belt. However, if you see someone wearing a green belt, it typically means that they are a student of a member of the Order of the Laurel. The next peerage is the Order of the Pelican. 
The Order of the Pelican is composed of individuals who have been recognized for their excellence in and dedication to service. Companions of the Order of the Pelican are typically addressed by the title of master or mistress. Only a pelican has the right to wear the badge of the order, a pelican in its piety. This is reserved regalia. Students of pelicans are known as protégés and typically wear a yellow belt. Again, this is not reserved regalia. Anyone can wear a yellow belt. However, if you see someone wearing a yellow belt, it does typically mean that they are a student to a member of the order of the pelican. The last peerage is the Master of Defense, also known as the Mod. The Order of Defense is composed of individuals who have been recognized for martial prowess on the rapier and or cut and thrust field. Companions of the Order of Defense are typically addressed by the title of Master or Mistress. Only a Master of Defense has the right to wear the badge of the Order, three rapiers in Paul inverted tips crossed. A mod will typically wear this badge on a white collar. The title for a student of a Master of Defense will vary depending on the kingdom along with their traditional regalia. For example, in Atlantia, some students are known as cadets and wear a red collar. The last of the Society Awards are Supporters and Augmentation of Arms. These are both non-armigerous Society Awards. Supporters are figures usually placed on either side of a shield or device and depicted holding it up. These figures may be real or imaginary animals, human figures, and in some cases plants or inanimate objects. An augmentation of arms is an honor added to a registered device. The crown of a kingdom is giving the recipient the right to add another charge or charges to their device. The recipient then decides on the desired form of the augmentation, although the crown may make suggestions and in some cases will choose the form of that augmentation for them. On this slide, I've included several examples of what supporters and an augmentation of arms might look like. The written examples can be kind of confusing. The first image shows an example of an augmentation of arms. You can see the augmentation and how it might appear across a variety of devices. The second image shows an example of supporters. This is actually a full achievement of arms, but on either side of the device, you can see two gray wolves that are holding that device up. These wolves are the supporters. Now that we've covered awards that are recognized on a society level, Let's talk about kingdom level awards. And remember, this presentation is specific to the kingdom of Atlantia. The first level of kingdom awards is the award of arms and order of merit. These are awards that raise the recipient to the rank of nobility. Sometimes an award of arms can be given on its own, but sometimes it is given as an extension of an order of merit. For example, if Jane Doe is made a member of the Order of the King's Missileers for Excellence in Archery, she is then also bestowed her award of arms and is made a Lady of the Court. Remember, all Kingdom awards are given at the whim of the Crown, but some are given for specific reasons, so let's touch on those. As I mentioned, the Order of the King's Missileers is given for excellence in archery and missile weapons, like thrown weapons and siege weapons. The Order of the Coral Branch is given for excellence in the arts and sciences. The Order of the Silver Osprey is given for excellence in armored combat. The Order of the Sea Dragon is given for excellence in both rapier and cut and thrust combat. The Order of the Opal is given to recognize service. And the Order of the Quintain is given to recognize those who excel in equestrian activities. The next level of Kingdom Awards is the Grant of Arms and Orders of High Merit. These are considered the next step after the Award of Arms level awards and Orders of Merit that we discussed on the previous slide. 
For example, if someone has previously received their OPAL for excellence in service, should they continue to excel in service, they would then receive a Golden Dolphin. Again, most of these awards are given for a specific reason. The Order of the White Scarf is for excellence in rapier and cut and thrust combat. The Order of the U-Bow is for excellence in archery and missile weapons. The Order of the Pearl is for excellence in arts and science. The Order of the Sea Stag is for excellence in teaching both armored, rapier, and cut and thrust combat. The Order of the Kraken is for excellence in armored combat. The Order of the Golden Dolphin is for excellence in service. And lastly, the Order of the Golden Lance is for continued excellence in equestrian activities. Next, we have non-armigerous kingdom orders. Remember, someone can only be made a member of an order once. The Order of the Rose is for those who have successfully completed one reign as consort or queen. The Queen's Order of Courtesy is conferred by the Queen or Consort of Atlantia at the time upon those subjects she deems worthy by reason of their consistent exemplary courtesy to all subjects of all ranks in this realm and in the society at large. The Order of the Nonpareil honors and recognizes those who have shown excellence, honor, courtesy, or chivalry above and beyond any duty. The members of this order exemplify what it means to be an Atlantean. This award may be given only once per reign and is conveyed solely at the discretion of the crown. Next, we have non-armigerous kingdom awards. Remember, these awards can be given multiple times to the same recipient should they be deemed worthy. The award of the shark's tooth recognizes and honors those who have performed acts of valor for the kingdom of Atlantia on a field of battle. The award of the silver nautilus honors and recognizes those who have distinguished themselves by an extraordinary achievement in the arts and sciences. The award of the undine honors and recognizes those subjects who have distinguished themselves with exceptional service to the queen or consort of Atlantia. This award is a gift solely of the queen or consort to whomever they deem deserving. The award of the herring honors and recognizes those who have distinguished themselves by extraordinary achievement as autocrats. An autocrat is the person who is in charge of running an SCA event. The award of the fountain recognizes and honors those who have performed acts of service for the kingdom of Atlantia. The King's Award of Excellence honors and recognizes those who have distinguished themselves by their excellent contributions to the Kingdom of Atlantia. This award is a gift solely of the King or Sovereign to whomever they deem deserving. The Vexillum Atlantia, or the Award of the Banner, honors and recognizes the ferocity and valor of a group of fighters as a whole, not as individuals. When they fight as a unit, the group will have the honor of carrying the banner with the heraldry of this award into battle. The Award of the Star of the Sea honors and recognizes those who have distinguished themselves by extraordinary contributions and ensuring the future of our kingdom through our youth or new members, furthering their educational growth to become active and productive members of Atlantia. Our last group of awards are our youth awards. These are given to our youth depending on their age and activity to recognize their achievements within the Kingdom of Atlantia. The award of the sea urchin honors and recognizes those children up to and including the age of 12 who have distinguished themselves by their contributions to the Kingdom of Atlantia in service, martial activities, and or the arts and sciences. The Award of the Ariel honors and recognizes those young people up to and including the age of 17 who have distinguished themselves by their acts of courtesy. A Royal Augmentation of Arms is for the children of sitting royalty under the age of 18. At the successful conclusion of their parents' reign, the Crown shall gift these children with a Royal Augmentation of Arms to be an Enscallop Purpur. 
the Order of the Hippocampus honors and recognizes those young people up to and including the age of 17 who have distinguished themselves by their service and contributions to the Kingdom of Atlantia. The Order of the Sea Tiger honors and recognizes those young people up to and including the age of 17 who have distinguished themselves by acts of valor and chivalry and youth martial activities. The Order of the Alcyon honors and recognizes those young people up to and including the age of 17 who have distinguished themselves by their labors and achievements in the arts and sciences. The last part of our presentation today will talk about the baronies and baronial awards within the Kingdom of Atlantia. As mentioned previously, kingdoms can be split into smaller groups depending on size and location. Some examples of these groups are principalities, baronies, shires, cantons, colleges, strongholds, ports, provinces, and ridings. Again, these groups can change depending on active size and location of that group. Currently in Atlantia, we only have baronies, shires, and cantons. Of these groups, only baronies can give awards to their populace in order to recognize their achievements within that group. I've listed the baronies of Atlantia here by age. The barony of Windmasters Hill was the first barony in the kingdom. Next, the barony of Caramir. Then the barony of Storvik. Next, the barony of Notting Hill Coil. Then the barony of Tyridon. Next, the barony of Sacred Stone. Then the barony of Black Diamond. Then the barony of Hidden Mountain. Next, the barony of Marinus. Then the barony of Lochmere, followed by the barony of Ponte Alto. Next is the barony of Dunkerrig, and then the barony of Bright Hills. Next is the barony of Steerbach, then the barony of Highland Ford, then the barony of Hawkwood, and lastly, the barony of Raven's Cove. Referring back to the previous slide, you can see that there are 17 baronies within the Kingdom of Atlantia, each with their own specific awards. Some baronies give out five or six different awards to recognize their populace for various achievements. Some baronies can give up to 15 or 16 awards. So there are really a lot of different awards that an individual can achieve depending on the group that they live in within our kingdom. To view the baronies and their respective awards, please visit the Atlantean Order of Precedence. I've already inserted a handy link to that website here. A few quick notes before we end our class today. Anyone can recommend a person for an award. If you notice someone working hard or excelling in a particular area, you can recommend them by using our online recommendation system on the Kingdom of Atlantia website. If you're not sure what awards someone might have, you can look them up on the order of precedence. A note on titles. You've probably noticed by now that a lot of titles in the SCA can overlap. For example, both a laurel and a pelican can be known as a master or mistress. While these are the traditional titles assigned, individuals may choose to be referred to by any title that fits their rank or gender. In fact, Many peers will choose alternate titles based on their persona and their time period. Thanks so much for joining me today for this presentation of Who's That in the Hat? A Guide to Rank, Regalia, and Awards in the Society for Creative Anachronism. If you have any questions about the content of this presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at any time. Again, my name is Baroness Margaret Ladd, and I am the Chatelaine for the Kingdom of Atlantia. You can email me at chatelaine at atlantia.sca.org. Thanks, and have a great day.